Hi guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be fitting our short shift kit from 4H Tech. So we're going to show you down here, this is the original linkage here. If we cycle through the gears you'll see it all moving now. Perfect, so if we hold up this new part next to the old one you can see it's a fairly similar shape. The only difference is that this pivot point here for the linkage is a little bit shorter. Now this part claims it will reduce our throw size by up to 44% so it'll be interesting to see. We're going to jump in the car and we're going to do some measurements using the standard linkage and then we're going to get our new one fitted up, show you the process of that and we'll compare and see if it's worth it. In the car we have taken this stick of wood and we've measured the throws on the original mechanism so we've taken a ruler and we've just kind of offered it up to the centre line on our gear diagram. So that's our first gear into neutral and back into second. What we'll do is once we have fitted our new short uh, shift linkage we're going to check again and see what our throws look like. So that's it for inside the car, we're going to get out now. So I'll show you guys what we get in our kit. First of all we get the short shift linkage here. And we'll show you how that looks on the car and how it compares to the original part as well. And we're here. Inside the bag you get a set of fitting instructions but you won't be needing that because you've got us. Inside the bag we also get a cool 4H tech sticker. Looks pretty decent. And in here we've got a set of instructions but they are quite vague. It does show you quite nicely what the linkage looks like here. And that's the old original one there. So That's it for now. We're going to show you in our video how to fit it ourselves. This kit costs £90 on eBay. It's actually quite a lot cheaper than the 4H website, which is interesting. I'll put a link below to the eBay store that we bought ours from. Now it's worth noting that if you've got a Corsa D, you'll need a different linkage than the Corsa E. So we're showing the E linkage here. So our first step is to pop off the original gear linkage cable here. Now it's held on with a little ball joint. I'll show you that on the new one here. So all we're going to do with a long jemmy bar is get on top of here and we're going to pop this out. Right, it's also worth noting that the cars in neutral don't do this with the car in gear. will end up causing damage to this uh, linkage cable here. There we go, and now we can see that that's not connected. Next step is to remove this bolt here that we've marked in yellow. So next up we're going to remove this 15mm bolt here that's holding on the gear linkage. Now we've used uh, an extension on our ratchet so that the ratchet kind of comes out to this sort of area here and that's just going to give us the space to work. Now strangely enough, if you start turning it you're going to end up engaging a gear because of the way the linkage works. You're going to have to support it with this um, sort of small jemmy bar here. It's more awkward for us to film than it will be for you to do it yourselves. You can see the linkage moving there as we turn. So with a bit of a crash we managed to get this bolt off. It's not on too tight, you can see that now. We're just going to move that by hand. Anyway, we've got that nut somewhere safe. Uh, with a little bit more nail varnish, we've just marked the threads on here, so that means when we've got to replace this, we know roughly how that's going to go on as well. Right, so our next job is to prise off the gear linkage here. Now we're just going to be careful because there's this little sort of plastic rubber bit. It looks like a, a breather of some sort, so we're just going to be careful not to damage that. And underneath here, we're just going to lift this up. Here's a side-by-side -side shot of the two linkages, and they look fairly similar. This uh, bit here is a master spline, which means it can only go on one way. So we've marked up this one, and we can realise that it goes on this top one here, matches our yellow paint. And again, here we've just marked what one's going to what one's going to match up. So if I line these two splines up, we can actually see that the pivot point here for our linkage is considerably shorter, and that's what will buy us the shorter throw space. So it'll be interesting to get this one fitted up and get some measurements on there. So with a little bit of awkwardness we've got the splines to line up and without the nut we're going to put our socket back over the top. We're just going to very gently tap this down, we're not going to be adding a lot of force at all. 
and that was just enough to get it down and we'll get our nut back up and you can see that our black dot I right, use a zoom there and you can just see there that our black line does line up with our yellow paint so we know it's on the correct notch. So after some gentle taps we're going to screw our bolt on finger tight. We're going to tighten this up and that's just going to bring this, the uh, linkage further down onto the spline. So we're not going to torque it with our ratchet over the top you know, and tighten it up. We're just going to very gently do it here and that's going to bring it on the proper depth. Right, so using a little mirror here, we've got this Oscar winning shot and you can see how the linkage has sort of bedded down in the spline. So we've got a little bit of tightness to go just to get that snug up against there. Right, so this is a bit of an awkward one, but we're just going to hold the linkage with one hand. I'm just going to apply a bit of torque to this to tighten it all up. Rest in peace. Final thing we've got to do is get this ball joint for the gear linkage arm back on. You can see the ball joint there and you can see the cup that it's going to go in. I'm going to line it up and apply a little bit of pressure. It's a very awkward place, you'll need two hands, so you're not going to see much. So we heard a fairly reassuring clicking noise there and that should be us ready to rock and roll. With everything fitted up, it's now the moment of truth. We get to see what the gear throws look like now. So I'm going to uncover this with the ruler and I'm going to show you our new position for our first gear. I put this down. There we go. See it is a considerably shorter distance. I'm going to come back into second gear. Show you that again here. Obviously the position of neutral is unaffected. So I'm not going to say that's 44%. It looks slightly, slightly less in effect than that. But what I will say is, if we remove this, is that the new feeling of the gear shifter is a lot better. It feels really short and snappy. There's barely any distance here. It's going to be ace. I'm going to get out for a little drive next, and I'm just going to show you how it feels driving. It didn't look like it made a huge difference. This feels absolutely chalk and cheese on the road. Absolutely brilliant feeling. The throws are reduced by a huge amount. So when you're out on those quarter miles and you're chopping up all those forwards, you'll know why. It's a mod we'd recommend. We're going to get back. We're going to check up all of our bits and pieces again, make sure everything's still tight. So we've just gotten back and we've just checked over our bolt and stuff's all still tight, make sure our ball joint's still in and we're happy with that. We've applied our sticker because we think it's absolutely awesome. One site we're on had this part for £110, um, as I said I managed to get mine on eBay for £90. I'll stick the link in the description and show you that. Uh, but as always, thanks for watching guys, we really appreciate it. Remember to drop any comments and like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.